If you came in a little bit late this morning, you did not get a chance to say good morning. I love you to anybody in here. Why don't you take a minute and do that? Go ahead. Tell somebody you love them this morning. Amen. Woo, God bless us one and all. Okay. We have someone with a little story to tell. Once upon a time, long, long ago. <laughs> well, um, just wanted to let you in on an adventure I had over New Year's Eve. Uh, we had an opportunity, our son paid for our ticket to go up to Washington and spend New Year's Eve with the whole family. Um, needless to say, we imbibed a little too much. And we had a really good time, really good time. And so did Omicron. It came through and hit everybody in the house. Uh, my son, who had gotten vaccinated, had the worst of it. He had 102 fever for two days. But thankfully, everybody's over it. Uh, unfortunately, the devil was not doing me a favor on this trip. I lost my wallet, everything in it, $300, my IDs, uh, my bank card, everything. Um, and I said, my son told me, don't worry. That can all be replaced, and I prayed to the Lord, Lord, if I'm going to lose that money, let it go to someone who needs it for rent, food, or whatever. So um, we were, my biggest concern was getting on the plane to come home, because I had no ID. So uh, fortunately, the Lord was with me. I had a copy of my insurance card at the bottom of my purse, and I had my checkbook, and that was enough to get me through TSA. <laughs> so, um, thank you, Jesus, for getting me home safely, and um, thank you, Lord, for getting us all through that bad Omicron, and I'm praying that this is going to be your last hurrah to get rid of this thing forever, because that uh, we're all going to be on a path to health and good fortune and God's blessings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Amen. Well, good morning, and good morning to you watching us on, on our video this morning. Good to have you with us. Um, last week, I spoke to you about unforgiveness, as, as well as forgiveness, and uh, a few of you came to me and told me that you realized it was time to deal with some things, and that you were, uh, were going to do that. I want you to know this morning that I admire that, I honor that, and I bless you for that. It, it's, a, it's a big step to take care of, of things. Do you believe this morning in a spirit world? Not everybody does. Do you believe in the spirit world? Yeah. You better believe in the spirit world because I think it's more real than we are here. Amen. I'll tell you what, the spirit world is real. Today we're going to look it into some of the spirits that hang out with unforgiveness. We talked about that last week. I want to step in to the spirit realm this morning and take a look at some things. I want to look at some of the spirits that hang out with unforgiveness, that work together to control our feelings, to control our thoughts, how they conceal one another, how they hide behind one another, and how they protect one another. They layer themselves so we don't even know they're there. They work together to try to beat down. They try to beat down. They try to confuse. They try to hinder. And finally, to prevent the godly spirit of forgiveness being activated in us. They do. They do. Are you ready? ready. Grab your Bibles. <laughs> Grab your Bibles because we're going to start. In Ephesians chapter 6, Pastor Denny has been teaching on this. And if, if you've missed those classes, I want to tell you this morning, you have missed a tremendously powerful and a life-changing message. Really, you missed the milk cow. 
Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 12, tells us, for we do not wrestle, we do not battle. You know, wrestling isn't boxing. Wrestling isn't kung fu. Wrestling is up close and personal. Do we understand that this morning? Wrestling is up close and personal. We do not wrestle up close and personal against flesh and blood. But what? Against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Amen. The Amplified Bible says that we wrestle against the powers, against the master spirits who are the rulers of this present darkness, against spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly, the supernatural sphere. Verse 13 goes on to say, therefore, because of that, because what I told you is true, Put on the complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. The Message Bible simplifies it and says, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple of hours. No, this is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Amen. So we wrestle against what? Yeah. Yeah, we wrestle against... Heathen spirits, that's who, we're, that's who we're battling against. I think we got that. So if, if I'm at odds with you, and you, or I, you and I are in conflict with each other, can we see from that that you are not my enemy and I am not your enemy? Because we just read that. If we believe this stuff, then we're going to have to start walking in it. So if we're at odds, we're not at odds with each other. We're at odds with the spirits who are working between us. Wow. That's some thoughts. Say law there, folks. Amen. Knowing this, that we, even knowing this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Often enough, we still find ourselves suffering from a common problem throughout the body of Christ, and that's the inability to separate the sinner from the sin. We really wrestle with that. And we see people and know people and describe people by their sins. It's hard for us to separate that. What the Holy Spirit wants us to see this morning is that their sin is not our enemy. Excuse me, let me rephrase that. <laughs> that their sin is our enemy, they are not. <laughs> Woo! Let me fix that. Uh, don't be confused. It gets better. <laughs> See, we tend to equate that person with their sin. But God the Father, you, you probably heard it before, He separates the sinner from the sin. He can see us in the realms of the Spirit. And He separates. He separates the sinner from the sin. He can love the sinner. And He can hate the sin. But today isn't about sin as much as it is forgiveness unforgiveness, and it's about unforgiveness and his friends. Let's get started. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I want to submit to you today, my family, that unforgiveness, everybody wants to say unforgiveness, go ahead. Unforgiveness is a principality, is a principality, one of those rulers of darkness that we battle against, a spiritual host of wickedness. That means he delivers wickedness. He's a host. 
Wow. Like the Amplified was talking about. And he's not only one of those rulers of the darkness of this age, he has seven other just as bad or more deadly spirits that answer to him and protect him and defend him. Are you ready to find out who they are? And we're going to pull the pants down on them today. <laughs> Nobody's going to leave here not knowing this. Amen. Okay, the first spirit I introduced to you last week was what? Unforgiveness. And he has seven supporting pillars. I, I, I call them supporting pillars that hold him up. Let me introduce you to spirit number one. His name is bitterness. His name is bitterness. Hebrews 12, 14 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, causing trouble. And by this, many become defiled. He said, by this, many are moved to become worse. Many are moved to become worse. When we're done wrong, when you and I are done wrong, that root of bitterness sprouts up inside of us. It's, it's the first taste in our mouth it is, is bitterness. It's the first ouch of offense. If you remember last week, I said that, that, that when we forgive, many times we forgive someone, but inside us remains that offense. And, and it's there. And the next time it happens, or the next time something similar happens, the first thing that happens is what? There's an ouch. Because I'm identifying with it. Amen? Oh, boy. The first thing that happens is, 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 is that ouch comes, and we're reminded of the list of wrongs that are done to us. Who reminds us? Bitterness. And he reminds us of of everything that's got. See, we, we think we, we put it away, and we may, may well, but he's right there to whisper those things right back in our ears. Remember, 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 this is just like that. When we learned about forgiveness, we, we took a look into our lives at those whom we perceived had done us wrong. Amen? Remember, we did that just before communion. We did that just before communion. How many of us had a list to draw from? Yeah, don't show your hands. Yeah, we start going, we start going down the list. And we didn't have to go far because the Spirit was right there to give it to us. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. thought I'd forgotten that one. That one is really big. The spirits remind us, amen? They're knocking on the door. Why? Because they they pal up together. They they do not. They don't single you out. They, they pal together. It's like dogpiling. Once you're down, they're coming. Now, when, when that one wrong was done us, when that one wrong was done, somebody offends me. I can think of 20 reasons I didn't like that pot liquor anyway. <laughs> huh? Yeah. I didn't like them anyway, so be gone. Maybe more. <laughs> those reasons, those reasons are all bitterness in action. We've got to see it for what it is. And what happens after we get that list of wrongs going in our minds, it's when that, that, that next spirit, spirit number two, the spirit of resentment steps in. Resentment moves in with bitterness and unforgiveness. Hey, we're having a party. Come on in. We got this guy going. We got this lady going. Come on, man, join us. This is cool. We're having a party. So number two is resentment. And resentment is that record of wrongs. And it turns over and over in us. It's that cud-chewing thing that starts. It comes right behind it. We do by holding those wrongs. It's why we can think of, of Joe Jones up here in the mind. But when we think of him, we get that, Ugh, I didn't like that guy. Why? What did he do? Well, he's on my list of wrongs. Yeah. It's a mind game that's being played by the enemy inside our heads. Why do we give him such license to come in and move my thoughts? Actually, to come in and be my thoughts. Why do we do that? We hold 
that touchy thing in our heart against them. Now, these spirits are real, and we've got to recognize this and walk in this and understand that, that we have a very real battle that we're fighting. These spirits are real. They're our enemies. They are not psychological. I tell you, they are not psychological. They can cause psychological issues, but they're not psychological. They are real. They are real. The spirit, they are spiritual first. You tracking with me so far? Okay, so we have unforgiveness, one of those rulers of darkness of this age. And he's being reinforced by bitterness and resentment. And he's building strength. And who enters? <laughs> That's right. His name is Retaliation. Woo! Even a dog knows. Thank you so much. Right on time. <laughs> Retaliation is the spirit. Listen, the spirit that says inside of us, I'll get even with you. May not be today. May not be tomorrow. You ain't never going to see it coming. But I'm going to get back. And it's going to be bad. And when that spirit starts to dig in, we can begin to think about all the ways that we could make that person pay. What is the best way to bleed this guy for what they did? Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, and retaliation. And they begin to work together to twist our minds. To twist our minds even to the point that we can start thinking, I will kill myself. That'll fix them. <laughs> oh, they'll be sorry. They'll be sorry. That's how twisted our minds can become when these spirits start speaking to us and we start coming into agreement with them and acting on their impulse within us. And now here comes the steam. You can hear it hissing. You can hear it building. Retaliation has gotten a foothold and now peeking through the door to see if it's safe to come in. Spirit number four. Anger. Anger. Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, retaliation, all break the ground for anger. Party! <laughs> if we're sensitive, we will begin to feel the strings as we're being moved, pushed, controlled. Think about it. Have you ever had that angry anger against anyone? Have you had that in you? Now think. Think for a moment. Was unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, and retaliation there with him? You doggone betcha. You doggone betcha. He was there. And then having come into agreement with all of these spirits in our heart, in our soul, then we can begin to hate. We can begin to hate. Sometimes this is just operating like this in us, and other times it's a roller coaster of days. But we can begin to hate. Spirit number five shows up. When the steam builds and the whistle blows, it is hate who moves in on us. I had a brother in the Lord. He was a, he was a peace officer. And he would say, hey, you can run from me, but you're just going to die tired. Can you hear the spirits at work in that? Listen to that very closely. Yeah, you can run from me, but you'll just die tired. It's already established in his heart that hate is going to take place. We can begin to think that the only way I can go on in this world is if you ain't in it. And it's not me that's the problem, it's you. 
You have to go. Of course, few of us have ever been there. Yeah. You are the one who must go, and I hate you for it. And it's right there where hatred reaches out his hand and invites spirit number six to come in. Violence. Violence. Come into me. Come into me. Come on board. Violence says, violence says, I don't just want you dead. I want you to feel the death come upon you. Violence says, I will choke you, then I will stab you, then I will hang you, and then I will shoot you, and I will kill you. That, that, that's violence, people. That's violence speaking. Violence said about Jesus, I will shame you, then I will abuse you, I will crown you with thorns, then I will beat you and whip you to shreds, then I will pierce you with nails on that cross, and then I will show you those who did it laughing at you, and then I will kill you. That's violence. It's violence being born within our hearts, and right there, Right there is that spirit of violence. Have you entertained that one? Man, I know I have. Without a, without a shadow of a doubt. I've welcomed, all, I've welcomed all these guys into my life. At one time or another. But right there is a spirit of violence. It's only one small step from violence to spirit number seven. Do you know who he is? Murder. Murder. Only one small step away. What is murder? It can be taking someone's life. Yeah? It can be taking someone's life. It can be taking someone's physical life. What about destroying a life with a tongue? Hmm? We heard that in James chapter 3, verse 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast, bird, reptile, creature of the sea can be tamed and has been tamed by my, mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. How does murder take place? In a thousand different ways. And some of us, when we've been subjected to these spirits, are, are like, if I take that last small step, you will die the death of a thousand lashes, right? A thousand cuts. Because they all have taken residence in us. Our mind has been secured by the kingdom of hell, and we are dancing according to his tune. Now, many of us have gone right up to violence, not stepped over into murder, or maybe not exactly, when we then become people who talk behind their back, who speak curses, into their lives. Same as murder. Same as murder. My friends, my family, I want to tell you this morning that this battle that Ephesians 6 is telling us about this morning, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood is absolutely, positively true. Positively true. We probably all at one time or another entertained these spirits within us, maybe even acted on their impulse. They still may be resident in our hearts here today. They, they still may be. Unless we've taken authority, moved them out. 
still may be eating at us inside. When we see that person, do I just want to stab him? When I see that person, do I want to do him violence? Is there any negativity that rises up in me? It's still there. It's got to be dealt with. This list, it seems endless. Remember the ouchies? You've been a victim. Someone's taken advantage of you. You're justified. You can't do that to me. You can't talk to me like that. Somebody's going to pay. Even if those eight spirits are operating in us today, I can bet you that even if one of these spirits, I should say, are operating in us today, whether it be bitterness, it, it doesn't matter, resentment, if that's operating in us today, I will guarantee you that, that his hand is right now, in this moment, outreached to the next spirit to come in. So you don't have to start at bitterness to receive any one of these. But boy, I'll tell you what, you start and the gang shows up. Each one seeking to build upon the other. Each one progressively worse than the other. Each one protecting one another. Defending one another's positions. Look at their names again. Yeah, you should have wrote them down. Unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, retaliation, anger, hate, violence, murder. All support one another. That's why I can't forgive. You don't know what he did to me. That's why I can't forgive. You don't know what they did to my mom. That's why I can't forgive because I've got all these underlying pillars that are holding unforgiveness up before me and I can't forgive. We've got to get down here and take care of these supporting spirits to overcome and to have that forgiving spirit in us. These are powers that we wrestle with and, and the Lord has seen fit not to remove their influence from us. Why? Because he gave us power over them. Amen? The good news is we have power over them. Listen, in Galatians 5.16, Paul said, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We won't be drawn in by these evil spirits if we are walking in the Holy Spirit. We can't be drawn in if our mind is focused on God. These eight wicked spirits I shared with you this morning, they are lusts of the flesh. Woo, it's quiet. They are lusts of the flesh. Look at them. They purpose themselves to satisfy the flesh. Yeah, they purpose themselves to fulfill your flesh, all the while bringing with them death and destruction. See that. See that stuff. I'm going to need you guys up here. Paul goes on to say to the Galatians, he says this, listen guys, if you will abide in, if you'll be led by the Holy Spirit of God, something amazing will happen to you. He says, if you will abide in Him, Something amazing is going to take place inside of you. You will produce, from that relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will produce a spiritual fruit. It will be the fruit of the Holy Spirit born in you. He said that our lives will be producers of these spiritual fruits. Now, these battle the same spiritual battle that we've been talking about this morning. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. He says, against such there is no law. I would say, against such there is no outlaw. 
that none of these guys can battle against those spirits. Having the spirit of joy in me, the spirit of love in me, the spirit of peace, long-suffering, kindness, the spirit of goodness. I have a spirit of faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all growing in me. That, that's the fruit that I'm producing. There is no way that these eight guys can do that to you. They can't get through. I would say against such there is no outlaw. There is just no way that we can walk in such spiritual fruitfulness, spiritual power like this, and subject ourselves to any of the unclean spirits I've been talking about this morning. You know, I think if any one of us in here this morning would go into our, our lives, we found ourselves laying hold of these eight bad guys. We've laid hold of it. Be honest. We, we've, we've entertained these spirits. And they have not produced anything good in us. Only harm. They only bring harm. We cannot battle by the flesh because we battle against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realms. Listen, we can't battle them in our flesh. It's just not a fleshly battle. It's a spiritual issue. Spiritual issue. Ephesians 6 says that when it's all over, put the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Is that a good thought? Yeah. You know, when this is all over, I'm going to be last man standing because I'm not allowing this to take place in my life. Friends, I, I hoped this morning to bring a reality to us. Not only about the spirit world, but the way that the spirits in these heavenly realms work together trying to manifest our destiny away from God. How they work together. How they bring ruin to our lives. How they destroy relationships, destroy friendships, destroy, <coughs> excuse me, marriages. How they tear the hell out of us. And friends, if we're not aware of this, we will surely perish and fall to these spirits. So that we would be thinking about this. Maybe even going into to next week. Someone comes against you. Something comes up. You heard something about somebody. I don't know what it is. Are you going to rise up with the fruitfulness of the Holy Spirit? Or are you going to entertain thoughts that destroy. When these demons manifest themselves in our thoughts, they're not speaking to us, you ought to get back at that guy. They speak to you in the first person, I'm going to get back at that guy. See, oftentimes we think it's us doing the thinking. If that thinking's stinking, it ain't our thoughts. It's being programmed into us. We know all about programming. I don't have a cell phone, but it looks like this. We know about programming. And in our lives, we're put in so many situations. Listen, the enemy, he's been, he's been eternal. He, he's, been, he's been living. He knows you like a book. He knows what buttons to push. He knows the order in which they should be pushed in order to control you and I. Now, if we can get our thoughts on the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and keep our minds focused on God, we shall not be moved. We will be as a tree planted by the rivers of God. We will not be washed away. We will not be sacrificed. We will win. Because this is a spiritual battle. 
And I just think that's all you need this morning. That's enough. That's enough. That we'd be thoughtful about the world we walk in. So, Father God, I thank you this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the revelations that are ours by the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that you have empowered us. You've give, given us everything that pertains to life and called us into a life of abundance. Father, I thank you that there is no, no demonic force that can overcome your hand. No demonic force that can overtake your spirit thoughts in our minds. So, Father, I just pray now in Jesus' name that as you work in every heart here this morning, Holy Spirit, you direct us. You bring us encouragement. We don't battle against flesh. We don't battle against one another, Father. You told us that. So teach us then to not rise up in the flesh, not seek to, to please the flesh, but rather to rise up and produce only more fruit of your Spirit, only more love, only more long-suffering, only more gentleness, only more of you, Lord, so that we will be your overcomers. We just pray these things. In Jesus' name, amen? amen? Amen. Before you get out of here, you're going to give somebody some sugar, amen? amen. We're going to sing a song. Go ahead, guys. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. you everyone. Have an awesome day in the Lord. Amen.